यू नो पावर बी आई बट स्टिल यू हैव लॉट्स ऑफ क्वेश्चन इन योर माइंड हाउ डज इट हैपन वाई इट हैपन्स हाउ कैन आई डू दैट दिस इज द सीरीज फॉर यू सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल एंड प्रेस द बेल आइकन टू गेट द नोटिफिकेशन हेलो एंड वेलकम टू अनदर वीडियो ऑफ एबस्ट्रेक्ट थीसीज सीरीज एंड इन टूडेज वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस हाउ कैन वी क्रिएट a star schema from a single table now we have done this in the past in the beginner tutorial series but i decided that i should make a single video so you can look at all the steps what we are doing and can you know uh, re repeat some of these steps on another data which you are getting so let's uh, jump onto the power bi and in power bi i'm going to uh, cross this welcome screen and i'm going to open uh, uh, the data so the data which i need basically here is the beginner tutorial series data so let me bring in that beginner tutorial series data from power bi data folder and for that i need the file which is for beginner tutorial youtube series now this is the smaller version file which is also available on github if you need the bigger version uh, you can ask uh, for the uh, dropbox link i'll also try to give the dropbox link and the dropbox link will contain uh, this retail data file which is typically the 59 mb file so let me open this file and let me click on the sheet so if you look at this sheet this is a single sheet uh, having all the data what we need okay and let me click on this sheet so unless you click on this check box till that time you will not be able to load the data so by simply by clicking on the sheet is not going to load the data and then what i need to do is i need to click on transform data because i first would like to transform the data and then go and load this data now what happens if there are single tables let's say like um, look at this order number is fine order id and order number is fine order date is also fine we can create a date table now either we can create it in power query or in dex and join it with this there is no time stamp as you can see there is 12 am so we'll use the date table now this item id item number category sub category sub sub category and brand this is another unique dimension and now what we have to see we have to see the cardinality of these two which one is basically unique key now to do that I, what i need to do is i need to go to the um, view and i need to add the column distribution and in column distribution i actually i need the complete data i can't live with you know this 1000 rows so what happens if you see below on the status bar it says column profiling based on the 1000 row now i need to click it on based on the entire data now because it's a bigger file it's going to take a um, little bit of time and after that it's going to show you the profile now meanwhile while it is showing the profile item id item number category sub category sub sub category and brand they all belongs to item dimension okay and then unit price belongs to sales table quantity belongs to sales table discount percentage in this case in this file is correct it is percentage gross sales is the column which i don't need because i should calculate that in power bi but if you in case you want to keep it you can keep it discount is another uh, major which is there now discount is again discount percentage multiply by gross sales is already calculated here sales is nothing but net sales whatever i create in my videos unit cost is the cost so you have a price you have a cost so that's the cost here then there is a requested date and delivery date this table has multiple dates uh, now there is a city state and location id region is not part of the city state the region there are different region available for uh, single city so region is a separate dimension state city and location id is a uh, single dimension order type payment type are dimension customer id is another dimension which is available here now i would like to separate out and create a star schema what is the challenge now there are few tables which i need to carve out separately so like these are the table which i need to simply carve out from this table so i need to go ahead and remove those col table columns and you know get that data out now there are other table like order type etc which actually i uh, need to create even the id column and join it back to create the id column so we have to take so what i'm going to do is let me call this as sales now instead of doing operation on this table uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to add this table once more because that i'm going not going to change only thing i'm going to do there is basically carve out the other tables from there okay so let's uh, do one thing let's add this table again so we can use this option here recent sources and retail data we'll use again 
Now, when I'm going from transform data and I'm going to go and say, okay, it's directly bring, going to bring me back here only. Now, this table, which I'm going to get sheet one now, I'm going to call for dims. And I'm not going to change this table. I'm not going to do any action on this. The one action which I'm going to do here is basically, now this data is still loading. The one of the action which I'm going to do is, I'm going to remove the unnecessary column which are there. So that from this table, whenever something, so I don't need anything which belongs to uh, the fact, isn't it? So I don't need quantity here. I don't need discount percentage gross, discount sales, unit price, requested delivery date. All these I don't need because they are not going to participate in the creation of dimension. Now, because these are two same tables, isn't it? Also, I don't need order number with control. I'm pressing with the pre control pressed. I'm clicking previously. I was doing with the shift, but with the control you can do. So these are the things which I need in this table. Okay. So, so I want to remove these columns so I can click on these column and I can say remove or I can select the other columns and I say remove other column. Um, fine. So I say remove columns. So in this dim column, I now only uh, only have my dimensions. Now what I need to do is I need to first carve out the dimensions. So now one of the way is, you know, basically what you do here is let's say single dimension. I want to carve out the order type. So I say add as a new query. It's adds as a new query. And I'm going to tell you the another step. Let's do like this one first. Then what you can do once you say right click add as a new query. Let me explain this step again to you. So let me delete this. So after I done the cleanup in my dimension, what I've done is I scrolled and I attacked the single dimension. So order type payment method are my single uh, column dimensions and customer ID. I can separate out and definitely there is no nothing out there, but we will do that. So, and these two tables, I need to have same kind of incremental. Now, one problem which I've done here is basically I've removed the incremental column of date also. So what I need to do here is at least I need one date column which where I'm going to run the incremental. So the incremental is going to be run on order date. So let me bring it back because when I'm going to define the incremental strategy, I need at least one date. So the date on which you are going to define your incremental strategy has to be there. So I added that back because both the table need to, we need to run the incremental ETL and they should be in sync. So that's why I kept it here. Now, why I'm doing this? Because if I do some operation on sales, I create some formulas and I'm using reference then I don't want that reference to be a part of the, the calculation which I'm doing for the individual tables. And let's look what kind of calculations are going to happen. So order type, what I'm going to do is now I go to the order type, scroll and go to order type, right click and say add as new query. So once I add as a new query, I get this and look at these navigation step. All these navigation steps has been copied. So what is happening here is I got the another file. I got the navigation. I got the promoted headers. I got the change time. I got the remove column. I got the order type. So what's happening here is it's going to create the complete copy and then going to give me, and then there would be steps of this one. It is no more referencing that particular table. So what I said, okay, why don't I do this thing? Now I'll tell you first how, how that complete table is going to build and then we'll do. So then the next step is remove duplicates. And then we say two table when we say, okay, so it's going to say table from list, remove duplicates, the last day, split out or splitting, nothing, nothing, null values, extra values, error, fine. So this is how it's going to bring in a new table. Now what we can do here is basically instead of doing all this effort and I'm, and let's observe the difference when we go to do the first thing before we do that, what is the other method? Let's correct this. So what is this table now is this is order type isn't it this is order type and what we need in this table is order id how do we have going to add order id in this table by simply going to say add column and index column now when i add index column it may start from zero it may start from one that that is fine with us because that's not going to make any difference for us now it's taking a little bit of time because of the view so let me Let me uncheck the column distribution right now. So now this table has been created. Now we added this index column and in this index column, what we can call is an order type ID. Now what we have to do is we have to populate this order type ID into the sales table because we want to 
join on order type id not on the order type when we are joining it in the model view and then let's rename this dimension also and if you have some convention like fact and dimension you can use like order type name now what i'm going to do here is basically i don't want this so let me do one thing and if those who are following my beginner series you know we have learned a lot of functions so why don't we do one thing let's create a blank query now we create a blank query so new source blank query we created a blank query and right click on this blank query and before i go i need to know the name for the payment type column okay so this is my payment method column let me copy uh, copy the name of the payment method and you will understand once i right click on the query one advanced editor and i go here and i say list dot distinct and i say from dims and this is what i said now it is a reference and that is why i say i am not going to diff, uh, you know do any changes in that table so now i am simply doing one operation i am saying take list dot distinct from dims payment method okay so i got this table now now i got this table now here what i am going to do is so now what would happen this column will this table will load and based on this table this list will come again we can say convert to tables we have also learned this one a table from list you can find out the various option in the beginner tutorial series what all we can do now once that is done what is this column payment space method what next we need we need id so add column index column from one this time let's experiment how do we get from one so you will get this index column one starting position is one increment position is one i mean if you say give two you can generate the odd number series if you start with zero and then you give two you can generate even number series you can might you might like to start with let's say two in that case so payment method id so we got id we got now what is happening the entire dependency of this one is on the dims table so it's not going to load the data again and let me also call it payment method so isn't it a better method like because that is an enemy is going to load it isn't it so we, we can give a reference and can do that now um what we am going to do is uh, now because we like this particular method what we can do here is if you remember there are so many steps okay till remove duplicates actually i don't need what i only need is so here this order type if i remove all these steps from here and remove duplicate if i say from dim order type isn't it there we have its order underscore type so let's try that out let's check that out see what we have done is we simply went find out a step after which all these steps were happening and now instead of creating uh from scratch we created now this thing now the next thing which i need to do is basically now to carve out the dimensions which are basically coming from these multiple columns to do from the multiple columns what i need to do is basically i need to remove other columns and then i need to select one particular column and take the distinct okay so let's try out those operations so what we need to do is basically we need to do something known as select column now we we are not aware right now the the code so what we are going to do here is let's do one thing let we say reference okay so this created a reference and then in this reference we select we go here and we say choose columns fine 
choose columns is going to do the select column operation for us. So we say item ID, item number, category, subcategory, sub subcategory, and brand. Now once we get this step, we are going to do a little bit of modification. Right click, go to advanced editor. Now we know this is our table, isn't it? Now I move it here. Now the table is not available. Now and source, we are going to return the source. Remove double equal to. So what I'm saying, table dot select column from dims, give me all these columns. So sometimes what happens if like what would have happened? I would have manually written all the names and done all those things. Now I know I have table dot select columns. I can select the columns. So I created that and using that reference again, I done that. Now again, there is an operation table dot distinct which we can do. Now one way is I do this here or second way is I do it and if required, I change the steps. So let's do this. And let me rename it as item dimension now. And why I have not created, I'm not going to create any field here because this item ID is already a unique key for me. So I'm not going to do here. Now, what I'm going to do here is I, I'm, I'm not going to select, I'm not going to say do a distinct of the table. So what you used to do is we used to click here and then we used to say remove duplicate rows that are going to give us the, the distinct of the table. I don't want distinct of the table. I want to remove based on the item ID because the uniqueness is at the item ID level, not at the complete table level. So I'll say remove duplicates and here you say table dot distinct source item ID. I could have merged it with the last step if I want it. So now what happened is I got my table, which is my item ID table. Now this table, I don't need actually any kind of um, correction here uh, because uh, this already is a um, ID uh, table. But the only thing I can do is I can call it as item ID number, category, name, etc. Here I can remove the space. And because I'm not going to need the numbers, number, I can actually remove it, bring, I will not bring it itself. So what I can do is when I said this one, let's not bring it. We don't need it anyway. And if I've not done any action, then it's going to leave me there. And rename is here. So be careful while you are going, going ahead and changing the uh, you know, steps which are in the past or when, which are previous steps. Because if you disturb something, you may end up disturbing the entire uh, table and you might get errors in different, different steps and you might have to correct that. Now we done this and the same way we have to also do the region table. So let's do the same step. We are going to say reference. We'll get the complete table. Then we are going to select the state, city, location ID with the control, control press and we select it. And actually it's not going to make a difference. We have to go here and say, choose columns and they are all selected. So we have to again, choose it. We got it this one. And then we are going to say, based on the location ID, remove duplicates. Now you remember we, we have double steps here. So we go to advanced editor and we say, okay, we can merge these steps here. We are going to have this step and we, instead of source, we will have from dims and here we have source. So next step is going to be source. And this is what you have to carefully do when you're changing the steps, you have to make sure that the next step is correctly identifying or you're correctly returning it. So we say done. So now we got after item, what we got now? Geography also. So now we can separate out the customer. Very easy for customer now. We can say reference. We can say or customer is even, you just need the distinct. So let's not do this. Let's, let's open this advanced editor and we remove this step from this script. We'll say, uh, table dot distinct or uh, list dot list dot distinct from dim. 
name of the column is customer underscore id and then two table first remove duplicates and then convert to table this is customer table this is customer id and actually here i don't need to do that but i actually wanted to create a name so i'm going to create add a new column here custom column and I'm going to say customer name is equal to customer and I want to append the number to append that number what I actually need to do is I need to convert that into text so number to text number on both of them okay text doesn't have that so number from text, number to text, both are with number only. So now all our dimensions are set. Now only thing left out is basically to merge the keys for these dimension, order type, payment type, because other dimensions are already having their keys in the sales table. Now this dimension table dim I can't delete because all are dependent on that. Okay, that's what I have to make sure. Here I can demove. Now in the sales table, I don't. I need once I'm done. I might not need all these columns so which I need to delete it. So right now also now in this table other than item ID I don't need remove need these things isn't it. Similarly I need only location ID I don't need city state order type right now I need customer ID I need. Okay so I can remove these columns remove columns okay. For region, we have not created a dimension. Now let us see why. Oh, we have done a mistake. We have done remove columns in the wrong table. We have to do that in the sales table. So in the sales table, we can go item, category, subcategory. With the control, I am pressing. With the control press, I am selecting. And city, state. And I can right click and say remove columns. Okay. And I'm leaving region for you as an exercise, which you have to try out and create it. Rest I'm creating here. So now what need to be done is basically we need to get the IDs. Fine. We need to populate these ID into the sales table. So let's go to the sales table. Now in the sales table, we already have ID for location ID. So we don't need it. It's already numeric. We have item ID already. We don't need it. We can basically remove all the other columns, but we need to populate the ID for the order type and payment type. So let me do one thing. Let me now opt for the option merge queries and I'm going to opt for the first option merge queries. I want to merge it here and then let me take the order type name. There I have order type which is matching with the order type of this column and they are matching because if you remember we created from this column only now we have taken a separate table where we will have the same kind of incremental setting now it's going to match it's going to take a little bit of time here because uh, you know the column profiling is based on the entire data set so it's going to guess based on that but let me press ok here i preferred a left join in case something is missing but we can have inner join here uh, that's not a challenge here i'll say um i'll expand it once this is done what you once you do this much query actually it gives you a table to you and you need to expand now you can once you expand it, then it gives you option aggregates or expansion. So I want expansion. I don't want an aggregate. Ideally means if you're not sure, then you can take the aggregation and you can take max. Uh, so what we are going to do, we only need order type ID and we say, uh, we remove this use original column as suffix so that it doesn't give me the table name, column name kind of stuff. So once we expand this, so in merge query, what happens? We merge the table. The second table comes as a column. And that column itself is a table and what we do we expand it and try to you know uh, get the required column in inside this one now if there is uh, you know many to many join then the rows by expand if it is one to many like in this case that side is one and this side is many so we expect that the number of rows going to remain same and that we have to ensure while we doing this kind of stuff now that is done now we need to do another merge and the second merge we are going to do is again we are going to click on the merge query on the same sales table and this time we are going to bring the payment ID. So we are what we are going to do. We are going to bring in this payment method fact. 
and we go to click on the payment method here and payment method here again left join you can make it inner join also that's not a challenge because we know that we have all the ids which are required and while it is while you can wait for the estimation i'm just clicking here okay i don't want to wait for it I let it add the new column again this column uh, will be a column which contains table we need to expand the expand that and bring in the payment type id So column is added. Now let's expand it again. Uncheck everything. We need only payment method ID, and we say OK, and it should give us the new column. Now you remember, we remember that you know in this one we have started index from one, so we should get values like one, two, three, four. And uh, once we open the pop up there, you always see an option like you know if you want to load more, you have an option to you know uh, load more and check all the IDs. But just remember that don't filter it out because if you add a filter column. Like I can say load more and it's going to take a little bit of time and load this data and you can see you know uh, here some kind of processing happening in terms of MBs. Uh, so you will be able to get the um, the complete list uh, using this one but if you filter it by mistake and you you know apply that changes without removing that step then you may end up losing the information. Now sometime it may show you more data even than the file size. Uh, that is how typically you know the behavior happens in case of power query so it's not going to be that you know once you save the data is going to be you know having uh, going to take more size than what you originally have it's not going to do that uh, typically you have the size which is less than or equal to your excel size so sometimes you have a lot of content then it may be more so now we got our payment method id payment id we also have item id for item geography id for geography and customer id for customer now what you don't need here is basically now after this step you don't need payment method you also don't need order type you don't need um, uh, here uh, the state and the city and also you don't need the item deleted information which you already deleted so now these two columns can also be deleted now we only can delete these two columns after this step if you want or you if you don't want to do you can keep those so to keep little bit uh, you know so you what we are going to do remove columns so these two columns are also removed now we only have order type id and payment method region i am leaving you for you know to do the exercise now we will say close and apply now i had an option here basically uh so that you know there basically i can do basically that um, instead of uh, creating a date table in DAX, so I can create it in Power Query. List or dates can help you. And uh, if you are the one who are regularly watching the beginner uh, series, you might have seen already the video where we have generated a date table using the uh, the list or dates. Uh, so please go ahead and try that out. But right now what you are going to do, once this data is loaded, we will have a quick look at the tables and just going to create a simple date table uh, with one or two columns in our uh, power bi using the dex so the data is getting loaded and look at the files you know uh, data processing and sometimes this could be a little bit of concern for you because you know the amount of data what you see and the time of loading uh, because that's how the processing happens in uh, you know power query but what we have ensured that this table is the one which is basically getting the data and rest all are the references and why I have not taken references on the sales because if I create references from the sales till the last step whatever you have uh, that's what the table is going to be taken and secondly we are again merging back so it can create a, a reference loop so we might not be able to delete certain columns or maybe add back the information so two things I avoided that's why when you duplicate and delete it it doesn't give a problem when you duplicate and delete for because duplicate is not a reference creation so now let me go back to the power query uh, power bi and now we have this let me save this file now and let me save it like you know uh, power bi star schema and once this file is saved now this is going to be a little bit bigger file so it might take a little bit time but uh, um, now the file information is saved. Let's look uh, if Power BI has identified some relationship and all those are good relationships or not. So let me show you. Let me bring the sales table into middle. And you can see quite a few joins are there. But from dim is something which where you don't need the information, isn't it? 
you never needed the information from form dim so we don't need that so what we can do is we can say delete yes delete yes and delete yes we don't need any kind of information from this definitely from dim is something which we want to keep outside our this one now order type is correct payment method is joined let's check the joins also let me make it little bit bigger so payment method id is correct order type id is correct brand let me see it should be item id that's correct location is location id is correct what is remaining here on the side customer id did not get joined let's see why it did not get joined do we have customer id here or not we do have a customer id now let's join these two Now once we join the customer ID, you can see also that there is a join and whenever you do a join column, you might actually lose the aggregation on the join column. You may want to create a major on top on top of those later. Now you can do this and sometime if you have a confusion like there are too many tables, what you can do is below there is an option of plus button which can add another tab. You can drag one table and you can say add related table and you will be able to see that and so next thing you can do is you use this collapse all. So it's going to show you only the important columns and then you can adjust your, uh, you know, um, this diagram uh, based, as on, based on the need and you will be able to have. Now let's do quickly one thing. Let's create a date table. So for that, the option I'm going to use is you can click on any of the table. You'll get table tool and there you will get an option for new date table. And I'm going to call it as a date and I'm going to use calendar auto function. And in the calendar auto, I got all the dates which I required. Now it's starting from 2013, ending mostly in 2018. That's how uh, this data is. And let's add one column, add columns. So if you, you need to just little bit to be careful. Now the argument which this function takes is first it takes a calendar. It takes a table basically. It's, in this case, we are giving a calendar into this one. So only, if, uh, column which is available for the calculation right now with this um, table is basically in the add column the only column I can add with the reference to date column so if I need to do any calculation or I want to reference any column the only column I can reference in this add column function right now which I'm using is date function date column so date column is the only column available so let's say if I want to cre create year I'm going to say date year of date then if I want let's say month here I also need to use this date column only so I say format date close the date column and index you remember uh, you can have you know uppercase lowercase it's not case sensitive mmm hyphen yyyy now we know this for format is not sortable it's going to be a text column so we will also need a sort column which is again month here month here which is going to be month here sort and for month here sort what we do is we can have the format function or you can do year of date star 100 plus month this is the same thing i am doing for quite some time in quite a few videos if you have watched the videos from the channel you might be aware this is how we are doing it now i can close the add columns and i'll get my date table and you can you can click on the month here you can click here on the month here and you can say sort column and you can mark as month here sort column so now it will be sort based on that and a year start 100 plus month is something which is a sortable number now power bi identified dates as sortable date sometime you can do month start date also so we can create a month start date and we can sort month on that month end date we can also sort so that is another option which you have now in our data model we need to perform a join now let's add date here because in this model when you bring in the layout you have to bring in all the tables whatever you want now there will be no join by default uh, and you can join it with the uh, date like order date is the date where i want to join in this case now when i first time joining it i'm not marking it as a date table but you can see the it still it is it's a date and in the join you you stop seeing that one important thing which you have to do is right click on the date table mark as date table mark as date table now when you do that it will ask for a date column and it will only show the date columns right now. I only have one date column, which is a date. Sometimes you will have month start date, quarter start date, year start date. That could be there. Now it will convert it into a key 
and uh, once you see that they start seeing the date as a key you will know that you know it, it it has been marked as a date table another thing you will now more get date dot here date dot uh, quarter or date dot something like that so the automatic date hierarchy functions you will not get and you might have seen i have never used those i always try to create separate columns so that you know we have are having uh, chances of failure are very less in case uh, we forgot to convert a date table into a date table later I come back and do it so it doesn't fail so we always use functions like year instead of date dot year so now our model is complete we are ready to go ahead and do you know analysis and as usual you can create new columns functions whatever we have done the entire exercise you can go to the uh, beginner series post that you know this is the some exercise which you will see in multiple videos but what i have done is for quite some time you were asking that you know uh, give us a you know single video where we can do this conversion so now i have shown you how to do that now if that can be done somewhere in the source like database you should always prefer doing that second is power query and third one is dax if you are unable to do that we will see how to do this conversion into dax if you need to create similar kind of table can we do that and can we bring in rank and all those and can we still create ids or is it is it a good idea even to create an id column there or just we just separate out and do now having a dimension do give us an advantage here uh, when we have a, a star schema because what happens when you say all date it's only all date for the date table and i still don't have all filter on geography dimension item dimension so uh, those will still keep on filtering so that kind of advantage with dex gives us when you use all or all selected on a particular table or a particular table that's where you know star schema become really important and that's where you have lot of things which can get solved easily when you actually have a separate dimension table now depending on the condition you might actually want it to have uh, you know a separate table or you don't want it to have that entirely dependence on you know what you need in some cases we will have extended dimensions means we will have a dimension on top of dimension very similar to what we have in snowflake now i have quite a few use cases which i have discussed in this abstract thesis series including the grand total profit and loss statement where we have extended dimensions so it's not that star schema is going to solve all the things now those extended dimension could have been merged with the main dimension and some of the, some of those problems can be solved with the dimension itself but what happens is you don't want to you know change your dimension sometime and that's where the extended dimension helps so go ahead and try this out and look at all those videos special videos where we have used extended dimension and we have used a star scheme and solve quite a few problems that will help you out in better understanding of uh, power bi do let me know what else you want me to cover in this particular series thanks for watching this video thank you keep watching keep asking questions in comments subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that you can get notification for new videos thank you